So here I've got a shiny brand new Windows Server 2025 machine updated just to prove it's not smoke and mirrors. I'll do a WinVer and we can confirm that it is indeed Server 2025 data center. Now primarily all of the problems that you have joining domains are usually DNS related so let's make sure that we can ping the domain name and it's a private IP that's replying and just to be doubly sure I'll do an NS lookup on that now you need a reverse DNS lookup zone for this to work so if you don't have one it'll error but I do know for example that that is my existing domain controller so the, the graphical method of joining the domain click start click system the system at the top there should be selected by default so screw down to the bottom so it says about and then scroll down slightly you can click uh, domain or work group but I prefer to go to advanced system settings computer name and then under the section that says rename as computer change domain work group click change and then type in the domain name that we've just pinged so we know it can be resolved and what it should do is pretty much straight away it should challenge us for a username and password which it has done. Now, any normal user object by default can join 10 machines to the domain, but I'm just going to simply use the domain administrator username and password. And after a few seconds, it should say welcome. In all the versions of server, that pops up behind this window confusingly, so you sit there waiting ages for it. It's telling us that we need to restart. Click OK and click Close, and we'll be prompted once again to restart the machine. When that starts up, you see if we've got a couple of extra options. Now, I don't want to log in as the, as the local administrator, so I'm going to click other users. Uh, now, because I'm going to log in as the administrator, I need to put domain name backslash administrator. I could have used administrator at test.net. Or I could have used dot slash administrator. Now, the first time you log in, it will take a little bit longer because obviously there isn't a profile on this machine for the domain administrator, so it'll take a few seconds. Longer than it normally would to set that up. And that's us successfully logged in as the domain administrator with the machine joined to the domain. Now if we just hop over onto our domain controller, go to administrative tools and active directory users and computers, you can see in the computers or you, there's our machine there. Now if you've redirected your AD to put computers in a different OU, obviously it won't be in that, but by default it should be in that one and we can see that that's a 2025 data center machine successfully joined to the domain. Now of course you don't have to use the GUI method, you can uh, use PowerShell if you would like to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to run an administrative PowerShell. And once again on this machine I'm just going to make sure that I can resolve the domain name before I try and join the domain. Once again, there's my private IP replying. Once again we'll do an NS lookup on that to see what the name of that computer is. And there it is there. That's the name of my domain controller. So to use PowerShell to actually join the domain, it's add computer. Space dash domain name and then the name of your domain and just as if you were joining from the GUI it will prompt you for a username and password and I'm using the domain administrator account and again we're prompted to reboot but it won't actually reboot for you but you can remedy that with a restart dash computer command that will reboot the machine for you. And once again, when it reboots, I'm 
going to log in with my domain account. And I want to log in as domain administrator. And just as before, because it's creating a new profile on this server, it'll take a little bit longer to log in than you would normally expect. That is us successfully logged into the domain. The machine is joined onto the domain and we're logged on as the domain admin account. So just like we did before, jump across onto the domain controller, open AD users and computers, and there's our machine. Just have a look at its properties operating system and we see that that's Windows Server 2025 data center and it's successfully joined to the domain. Now to actually remove machines from the domain using PowerShell is also just as simple. Once again I'm going to open an administrative PowerShell window but this time I'm going to use First of all, I'm just going to display the fact that I am joined to a domain. So get dash WMI object 132 underscore computer system. And then I'm going to pipe that and select object. And then I'm going to expand the property domain. So we just see what domain we're joined to. And we can see there that this machine is a member of test.net. So it actually leaves the domain we use remove computer and then we need to type in Y for yes. Now heed the warning there, you will need to know what the local administrator password is for the machine once you leave the domain because that's the only way onto this machine. Once again you need to reboot the machine so restart dash computer and the machine will reboot. So this time you'll see we have somewhat less options. We've only, if you had some local accounts, you'd see them down there, but we've only got a local administrator on this machine. And that is us successfully having left the domain, logged on as the local administrator. So this would be a standalone server. It would not be a member server of the domain anymore. And just as we can do that with PowerShell, we can leave the demand using the GUI also. So, like I uh, mentioned earlier, make sure before we leave the domain that we know what the local administrator password is. Now I do, but if you didn't, you could just right click set password and reset the password there. I'm not going to do that because I know what the local administrator password is. If you leave the domain without knowing that password, you end up locking yourself out of the server. So system once again about scroll down to advanced system settings computer name change select work group and type in the name of a work group. Now you can type anything in this box to be honest but I'm just going to type in work group. Click OK. You get another warning about having to know the administrator's password. Click OK. Welcome to the work group, work group. Okay, okay. And then once again, when you click close, you will be prompted to restart the machine. And just as before, you see we've got very little options. I want to log back on as the local administrator on this machine. And once again, we are now on a standalone machine that's no longer a member of the domain, that's happily in the work group, named work group, and we've successfully left the domain. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.pnlife.com.